Everyone knows steel. Steel are those like I beams, right? That you put in buildings that usually come really big. I gauge is essentially is they have a big sheet of metal. They bend the metal to form a channel. It looks exactly like this. And then this gives you strength, but it's also a lot cheaper to make than standard steel. Light gauge usually works like this. You usually have, like I said, a sheet and you specify thickness, what depth, what width you want it to be. For example, this would be, let's say, I think it's a 10 inch or an eight inch. So the way you measure it, you would measure the height. So you'd measure this. So this is eight inch, right? So this would be an eight inch piece of light gauge. And then the top, the flange would be, this is three and a half. So the way this nomenclature, the way you would spell this out is it would be 800 and then S, that's the company, but it'll be 800 S 300. Now, how do you specify the thickness? That instead of saying thickness, we say gauge. Gauge measures the thickness of the steel over here. So the way you'd measure this is you could either have a uh, tape measure or, give me a second, you have something like this. So I usually carry this around in my briefcase. I'll make a tour of like my briefcase for a site visit guide on a different video. But usually you take this, you will pinch to get over here to measure the thickness of this and then that would be the last number. So these are 10 gauge, which means that it's measured in millimeters. And I'll put it on the screen now exactly what that translates to, how what thickness it is in inches. But this would be a 800 S 350, then 10 gauge. Something that's interesting about light gauge is they'll build into the joist, which are the members you see above me over here, and even the studs, which would be going on the wall. This is the foundation, so you wouldn't see it. They usually build in these holes so that electricians can run their wires and they don't need to puncture this. So uh, this is a lot bigger piece. Like I said, this is a thicker gauge, which means it's a heavier material. So this is kind of support a lot more weight. But as you see, there's a hole right here. This hole is usually used to run wires and they'll occur pretty regularly throughout the joist. An issue that will arise with these light gauge joists, like you see up here, is that these joists will usually be very thin. And if you have very long joists from wall to wall, they'll tend to buckle. In other words, they'll want to do this. So what do we do to prevent that? So we could provide something called bridging or blocking. What bridging is, is essentially an X formed from joist to joist to provide some rigidity. So if one flexes, it will kind of pull the rest of them and the rest of them will prevent it from flexing. Blocking is kind of what it sounds. You take a block, or in this case, you take another piece of light gauge, put it in between the joists, and that will prevent the joist also from moving. It'll also provide rigidity. So like I just described right there where I'm shining my light is a case of bridging and you'll see one right above me over here as well. And as you can see, like before right here, this is to provide a hole so that they could put their wires through the flooring system and not have to worry about punching holes through their joists and reducing the capacity later on. And the way you would measure this or write this on a plan for the nomenclature, well, these you'd just call out as bridging and blocking. But the way you'd call out these joists, you'd say 800, like I said before, so 800 S 350, right, for 350, the, the, this flange, this thickness. And then you'd say dash the gauge, which let's say you'd be dash, let's say 54, 68, depending on the gauge. And then you say at whatever on center. What does that mean? That means how often does it appear? So you'd measure from here to here, and you see over here, it's 16 inches. So this is a 800 S 350 dash whatever the gauge is and then you'd say at 16 inches on center. Now I want to show you one more interesting thing right over here. So you see over here next to this staircase which this is going to be a staircase further on you see this double joist right here. This double joist essentially is back to back joist or it could be created like a box and what this is it runs all the way across and it runs this way and you see how many joists this is supporting all the way from there all the way down to here it's supporting a lot right so it's supporting a lot of this uh this wall this is probably going to be removed this is probably temporary but this is going once this is removed this this joist double joist is going to be supporting this entire area right so what they do is they put a double joist and they put a double one right here so all the load from this area comes down these joists hits this comes up here hits this hits down there and then goes into the foundation wall. And that's a steel lintel that goes down to the foundation. But you see it all goes down to the foundation and then we're all good. These vertical members you see over here are called studs. Now, usually the construction, the way it works is you have a joist sitting like this and then you have a stud right underneath it. So you have one continuous load path. So all the force goes from here all the way down and then into the stud straight down into the foundation. So over here, it's actually not aligned and you might be wondering why that is. The answer is because these joists are actually pocketed into the brick wall, which means they're not being supported by these studs you see over here. They're actually being supported by the brick wall 
that are sitting inside the brick wall. And then these studs are actually just for the sheetrock for later on when they finish. And an interesting thing you'll see, I'll zoom in, you can see these joists, you see that little piece right there, right over there? You see they have them, all of them have them inside, they're stiffeners. What they do is exactly what the description is, they stiffen the joists so that when the brick sits on top of it and all the load comes from above, in down onto the joist, this stiffens up that portion of the joist so the load could continue to travel down down the brick all the way into the foundation. Here you see these empty holes. These are where the pockets that the joists would sit into. So you see over here, these were newly installed. They went right into. These are the old joists that they removed. They didn't put any new joists in there because there's gonna be an elevator and whatnot here. But the point is the joists are not sitting on the studs as described earlier. They're actually sitting inside the brick wall as you can see right over here inside these pockets.